Hello friends and welcome back to Kurt Berglund's Baseball World. I'm very happy to be bringing to you today an updated demo of season ticket baseball. This is the first page of the instructions that you see here. <clears throat> and I'm going to share with you the procedures for going through the basic part of season ticket baseball. I'm going to share with you the ordering information, what you can expect when you get to the website, and a little bit of gameplay. Now, one of the projects that I'm going to be starting in just a couple of weeks is a 1981 replay using season ticket baseball. So you're going to get a chance to see the game in action in one of my projects coming up in just a couple of weeks. But for today, I'm going to go through all of the basics of the game on my channel already under on my playlist of baseball demos. And there are a lot of them there. You can find uh, a set of previous demos that I did on season tickets baseball more than one year ago. The game at that point was just beginning the demo stage, or the uh, beta stage, excuse me, the beta stage of the game of development. Now we have a finished product. And while things haven't changed a great deal in terms of gameplay, uh, the changes that have been made are sort of around the margins. And if you played it in the beta version, you certainly would recognize it in this version. However, it was driving me crazy that I didn't have, number one, an updated demo that covers everything now, and number two, the, um, what, the real display of how solid I think this game is in its current form. Um, and so it's definitely, in my opinion, it's worth a look. It wouldn't be on my channel if I thought it was a waste of your time. Uh, so what I'm going to do today is to try and go through those elements for you, and you can make up your own mind about whether this is a good fit for you. Um, I want to start by saying, and this kind of goes back to that beta version that I was demoing, um, Clay Dresslock is the designer of this game, and if you read his comments on Facebook or on Delphi forums, you get a very quick sense that this guy not only understands baseball, but he also understands the math behind baseball sims. He also has, in my opinion, a, a really good understanding of what sims can and cannot do. And so if we go by the old definition of a simulation as being a representation of reality, Clay's got a really good understanding, in my opinion, of what that looks like. So with that said, let's take a look at the instructions and gameplay for Season Ticket Baseball. In my hand are the dice that you will need for Season Ticket Baseball. You have one D6, and then you have a pair of D10s. The instructions tell you that the, the, the um, instructions sort of model these colors, the red D6, the white D10 and the blue D10, but you can go with any combination, of course, that you would like to go with. Um, the D6 is really the trigger for what you're going to look at for your play results. But before we get to that, let's look at your PDF. So you order the season. We'll talk more about ordering at the end. Um, but you order your PDF and you get um, six cards per sheet. They look like this. They are print. I printed these on um, 
Walmart 110 pound card stock, which goes for me at about, I think it's about $6 uh, per pack of, I think it's 150 sheets. So um, you get six per page and in the 1981 set, you get um, about seven sheets per team. So um, one of the things that you do not get um, with season ticket is uh, individualized pitcher hitting cards. At least you do not in the 1981 set. So there are pitcher batting cards in the instructions that you use if you're running a National League team. All right. The other thing you get with each team, this is the 1981 Mets. And so with each team, you also get a ballpark card. Season Ticket Baseball does use ballpark effects. Uh, this is a great... Um, I love the ballpark sheets on this game, and I'll tell you why. The first thing, you get a nice reminder of the dimensions. The second thing is, if you want, you can build in optional weather effects to your game. If you want to go that level of detail. Uh, and then these are standard. So your roll of 600, again, and that is triggered by the D6. So when you roll a six, now you have a potential of ballpark effects. And you then put your D10s together and you get your outcome here that you can check. You also get a chance for deep drives, which can vary as well. Um, and so I, I, this is just, I think, a very cool element of the game. So you get your cards and you get your ballpark chart. Um, so I left the Mets in sheets because I thought you might want to see what the sheets look like. I know some of you don't cut the cards. Some of you leave the cards in sheets. So I wanted to show you that. But if you do cut the cards, this is what they look like. This is the 81 Cubs. So what you get here, and I'm going to flip to a hitter sheet here to show you this, but on the pictures, you can see it as well. You get the name, you get the team, you get the season, the age of the player. In this case, do they pitch right-handed or left-handed? You get their role in the game. Starting pitcher, relief pitcher, or closer. Um, the stats are given to you at the bottom of the card, including for pitchers, the lefty-righty splits against batters. So in the case of Pat Zachary here, he gave up versus left-handers. They hit 301 off of him. Right-handers hit 250. All of your other stats are here that are helpful. And then you have a, a series of ratings that you will use during the game for that pitcher. A batter's card. So let's flip here. A batter's card will have the same thing. You've got the name, the position, the uh, team, season, age of the player, and which way they batted. Individualized ratings here, stats at the bottom. Now for both, and I'll bring this back for a second. For both pitchers, you can see that there is a column versus left-handed hitters. There's a column versus right-handed hitters. For pitchers and for hitters versus lefty pitchers versus righty pitchers. So there are splits in the game as well for both pitchers and for hitters. Stats go at the bottom. I think I said that already. Including 
uh, your average, your on-base percentage, and your slugging. So you get your split, your um, your split numbers, split results there as well. A slash line, excuse me, slash line. All right. So that's what the cards look like and how they're sort of organized. The font is good. I can read it. And you can tell that the use of color is important here as well. So what you're getting is outs on the black, on base on the blue, and then on your red results on a hitter's card, you get um, uh, fly out chance or deep drive chances. And then as well, you also get on the pitcher card, you are redirected with red results to other numbers. All right, and we'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. So you can leave them in sheets, in which case you'd have about seven to contend with per team. Or as I've done with the Cubs, you can cut them and go that way. There are team sheets. This is Shea Stadium. Stadium sheets for each team's home ballpark. All right, now let's get into play results. All right, I said before that your um, D6 is the most important die in the game because it indicates to you what chart or what card you're going to be looking at. I go, and this is not unique, but this is how I do it. I go in red, white, and blue order. So I read the D6 first. The white die is the tens digit. The blue die is the ones digit. All right. On the very first page of the instructions, you are shown that if you roll a one or a two on your D6, you're going to go to the pitcher card. So let, how do we know that? Well, if you look at the picture card, you can see that the 100 numbers, this is your hundreds digit, if you want to think of it that way, is found here on Lynn McLaughlin's card down the left column. That's the case for all pitchers. Your 200 level results go in the split zone. So the 100 level is not split the 200 level is split. Okay, then if you roll a three or a four with your D6, why then you're on the batter card. How do we know? Well, if we're looking on Bobby Bond's 1981 card here, we see that the 300 level is not split. The 400 level does have splits versus lefty and righty. That's where you find your splits. So the three or 400s, 300s here, 400s here, on the batter card. The next thing we have is defense. Now, for every player on their card is a defensive chart. So, if you roll a defense outcome with by rolling a 5, you could have a defense check here. I forgot to mention that every pitcher also has their way that they bat in the upper right corner here as well. So Lynn McLaughlin pitched righty, he hit lefty. So number five is a defense result. And then for number six, if you roll a six, you're going to the stadium card. And you are reminded of that right there. Here are your 600 level outcomes. And with all, as with all the others, you put your D10s together. In my case, I'm using the white one as the tens digit, the blue one as the ones digit, and you get your result that way. If this is all you know, you're ready to start and you have all these component parts, your lineup is made, you've selected your pitchers, you've got your stadium card, you're ready to start rolling season ticket. But there's more 
to understand, but this is these are the basics. This chart is the key, and that's why I say this die, this D6, I either use red or a very gaudy color because I want my eye to be captured by this die first as I look for my results of my at-bat. So if we're looking at getting you started on season ticket baseball quickly, Clay has developed a quick start card. And we're going to bring our attention to this now. Um, this is a one so I'm sorry, a one page both sides document that if you use this and you're wanting to get started rolling right away, you can do it with this. All right, so let's go through this carefully and then you can we'll talk about purchasing information after that. All right, so you've got your three dice. You got a replay of your chart here for the red D6. If you're choosing to use rare plays, they will come up on rolls of 500 to 509. If you're doing the basic game, you can skip them and really you don't miss anything uh, by using that to start learning the game. Defense we talked about, your rolls on defense are 510 to 599. And which player do you look at? Well, this tells you. If you roll 510 to 519, you're going to look at the pitcher's defense. See the one for the pitcher's defense, the symbol on their uh, and for scoring. So a 1 is the pitcher, so if it's a 5.10 to 5.19, you're going to the pitcher. If it's a 5.20 to 5.29, you're going to the catcher. If it's a 5.30 to 5.39, you're going to check the first baseman's defense, and so on. How do you do that? Well, in this case, let's say Bobby Bonds is your center fielder, and you rolled a 5 I don't know, let's say a 586. Well, that falls in this range. So now we have a double with a chance for the base runners to advance further and score from first. All right, stadium card. We talked about this. Your roll of 600 gets you on the stadium card. You get a home field advantage in season ticket baseball. So on the stadium card, you add five to the roll if the home team is batting. And then the fatigue, you add 10 for each level of pitcher fatigue. So, for example, if you roll a 600 at Shea Stadium in 1981, you roll a 600 uh, that would be a strikeout. But if you're the Mets, you get a five-point bonus, so it falls to 6.05, which is still in the strikeout range. But let's suppose that your pitcher is really fatigued. Now you're getting into groundouts or flyouts. You roll a 6.74, all of a sudden, your wild pitch, if you're the home team, if you're the Mets, you get a five-point bump. You go up to 679. Your wild pitch becomes a bloop single. So the higher your numbers go, and certainly the level of fatigue, drives these numbers up, drives your roll up, and that gets uh, better for the offensive team. All right. Redirection. This might be the most, I don't know, I'm not going to, the word complicated really doesn't apply, but most detailed part of the cards. If you get a red result, deep to left, deep to center, deep to right, you're going to re-roll on the stadium card. So let's pull out Bobby Bonds here again. Suppose that he's facing... Uh, right-handed pitcher, Pat Zachary, let's say, and you roll a 499. You have a deep to left 
uh, result. So we pull out our Shea Stadium card. We look at the uh, deep to left field number. And then we adjust for, because we're in deep to left, and that's what was on, Bob, on Bond's card. We take Bobby Bond's power number, which is found in his upper left corner of his card, seven. And we add that to your two um, D, D10s. Then you get a number here, which will give you some kind of a deep drive. And if you're using weather, you've got to check your weather effects here. So let's say you're playing as I will be in August. You had a day game in August at 70 degrees. What does that do for the roll? Well, it falls in Shea Stadium. It falls between 54 and 84. So there's no effect. If it was greater than 84 degrees, he'd get a bump of a plus one to the roll. Then check this chart, and that's the outcome. The point is that the redirection in red signal, the red results signal to you to look somewhere else for the result. If it's a deep drive, simple enough, you just pull out your Shea Stadium chart and you're good to go. If it's different, and this would be from uh, your pitcher card, uh, let's use Doug Bird here. Uh, let's say that Bird is facing Bobby Bonds for some reason, <laughs> and uh, you roll, so he's a right handed batter. And you roll a 254, and you have a 5-6-X. Well, what does that mean? Well, you're going to go to a different location for this result, and you're going to keep the last digit the same. All right? So let's look at the example on this sheet. Um... If it's 5, 8x in the example, you redirect to a different role, keeping the last digit the same. So what that does is it takes us to the defense chart. Because remember, your, your 500 rolls, if they're not a rare play at the bottom of the 500s, they go to the defense chart. All right. So... You roll a 254 to get you here. Whatever this, the, whatever that last digit number was. So let's say I'm going to give you the result here. Two and a five and a four. All right. So you rolled a 254 against Bobby Bonds. So this now becomes a 564. And what that does is it redirects you to, what would the six be? Well, the, your six, the, you know the 500 is a defensive check of some kind. The six tells you it's the shortstop. So it's gonna be a defensive check for the shortstop and you're gonna use the ones digit number as the X. So a 254, in this case, becomes a 564. So Bonds pulls it to the Mets shortstop. All right, so let's pull our Mets shortstop and take a look and see what would happen on his card. And I'm going to choose, as my shortstop of the 1981 Mets, I'm going to choose Bob Baylor, here we find his defensive chart. We've changed the outcome to a 564. 
And the 564 becomes a ground out to Bob Baylor, 6-3. And Bobby Bonds is retired on the play. So, there's two kinds of redirections. One is where you go to a different card or chart. I'm sorry, to a different card. The 400s and the 500s are good examples of that here on Bird's card. Notice they're in red. You also have one in 300 here. If there are two X's, you keep the last two digits, the last two digits the same. So the other kind of chart where you redirect is these deep drives. And the deep drives refer you back to the stadium card and your use of weather and a reference to the power number of the hitter. In this case, it's a seven. And that's it. That's the toughest part, in my opinion, of season ticket baseball, and it gets to be like second nature. You do it twice and you've got it. All right, let's look at the other symbols. For hits, single, double, triple, homer, pretty straightforward. Single plus is an outfield single, runner on second, runner on third, score, runner on first, goes to second. Single plus plus is a long single, runner on second, runner on third, score, runner on first, goes to third. Second base plus, double plus, long double, all runners score, even that guy on first base. Bloop hits, bloop single, less than two outs, you're going one base, advance. With two outs, a bloop single becomes a long single, and you go two bases. Bloop double, less than two outs, straightforward double, two base advance. With two outs, it becomes a long double, and even that guy on first base is coming around to score. Where do you find them? All right, on your hitter cards, you can see for Bobby Bonds, a result of a 458 is a bloop single against both lefties and righties. Um, Willie Hernandez gives up a bloop double on a result of 197 to 99 on his card. All of your blue outcomes, they're reaching base safely. Four outs. Strikeouts, no runners advance, flyouts, F7, flyout, no runners advance, F7 plus, flyout to left, that's your sacrifice fly. The runner on third tags and scores. F7++ plus plus is a fly out to left. The runner's on second and third tag in advance. Line out to L6 is a line out, no advance. Ground out on a 6-3, runner's advance, one base. 6-4 is a force out, there's your fielder's choice. And 6-4-3 is your double play. If first base is unoccupied, you would just change it to a 6-3 put out. Where do we find those on Bobby Bonds card? Well, um, Bobby Bonds had a, had a tough, in some ways, had a very tough season in 81. He was injured. This was his last year. He struck out a lot. So he's got some strikeouts here. You'll see here's a sacrifice fly. Uh, here are your double play chances. Here are your flyout chances with runners on second and third advancing. All right. Other results BB is a walk, HBP hit batter, E6. There's, your, there's a fielding result. E6 with a two in parentheses is your two based error and your pass ball and wild pitch. All right, so we turn the quick play chart, quick start card, excuse me, the quick start card to the back side. Runner advancement on hits. Now, you can use the base runner's speed 
uh, challenging the outfielder's arm rating to advance if the outfield position is shown to you on the card. So let's pull an example of that. Let's suppose we have Doug Bird and we roll a 168. We have a single and it's hit to center field. When that's shown to you, now you've got a chance to challenge the outfielder arm. If the runner chooses to challenge the outfielder's arm, we roll all three dice again and we add them together. So in this case, we don't read them as uh, 366, but we're gonna add them separately. Three plus six plus six makes 15. All right. Now, the runner is safe if we add these three together and this number is greater than 10 plus the outfielder's arm. So let's suppose that Bobby Bonds is challenging the outfield arm of Mets center fielder. Uh, who should we use? Let's use let's use Mookie Wilson. All right. Mookie's arm is in the middle here. It's in red. He's in center. His arm in center is a four. Bobby Bonds is trying to take the extra base. We've rolled three plus six plus six. That's 15. We take, so that's our number for Bonds. Now we've got Mookie's throw coming to get him. We take 10 plus Mookie's arm. We look at the card and we see Mookie's arm is a four. That means it's 14. 15 is greater than or equal to 14. So Bobby Bonds is going to be safe. If it wasn't, if we rolled instead a three plus six plus one making 10, then he'd be tagged out. Okay. All right. Other stuff you need to know before you start. Line L6, R2, exclamation mark, line out to short. The runner on second is doubled up. Fly out to right, R3, exclamation mark. The runner on third tags up, goes home, and the runner and the right fielder guns him down at the plate. R2 plus, the runner on second can tag up and tags up and advances. R2 question mark, the runner may challenge the outfielder's arm using the challenge system. And R1 question mark, exclamation mark, the runner on first must challenge the outfielder's arm. When you get the question mark, exclamation mark, he's got to go whether you want him to go or not. All right. Last couple things, and you're ready to roll, and we'll talk about ordering information. Steal attempts. You need to get to check for the lead. Here, you're going to add these two together. So... Let's say, again, Bobby Bonds is going to try and steal. There's a steal rating right here. We're going to add the steal rating to the two D10s. So the steal rating for Bonds is a 4. Plus 3, plus 6 makes 13. Let's suppose that he's trying to steal on Doug Bird. We have a 13... For him establishing a lead, Doug Bird's hold rating is a 2. So we take 10 plus the hold rating of 2, and that makes 12. Well, 13 is higher than 12, so he is trying the steal. He gets the lead. Now, stealing with a lead, you take the runner's speed rating, 
not the steel rating, but the speed rating, and you roll all three dice. His speed rating is a 3, plus 5, plus 2, plus 1, makes 11. Remember, my friends, there's three kinds of people in the world, those that can do math and those that cannot. And let's suppose, just for fun, that Bobby Bonds is trying to steal on John Stearns, the Mets catcher. Stearns' arm is a 5. So we have an 11. It needs to be greater than or equal to 10 plus Stern's arm of a 5. That makes 15. John Stern shoots down Bobby Bonds trying to steal. Then there's pickoffs and stealing home. Overthrows. If both 10-sided dice exceed the thrower's fielding, the runner advancing runner is safe and all runners advance one extra base, so that's possible. And last and very importantly, pitcher fatigue. Pitcher fatigue starts at zero when a pitcher enters the game. Stamina rating is the number of innings in which a pitcher can pitch without risk of fatigue. Stamina is here. He's a five for Doug Bird. After exceeding stamina, any base runner, so he goes five innings. Now, in the sixth, any base runner, hit, walk, or hit by pitch, adds one to the pitcher fatigue. Now you're saying to me, Kurt, who cares? You're just adding one to the pitcher fatigue. What difference could it possibly make? Ah, but here's where it matters, because when you roll your stadium card, and let's say Doug Bird has pitched five innings, he's in the sixth, and he's allowed maybe three base runners, and the bases are loaded in the sixth inning, past his stamina, for each of those base runners, you add 10 to the 600 roll. So now, a 670, a roll of 675, let, let's say 673, 673, goes from being a fielder's choice to short, becomes a 703, a deep drive to center because we're adding 30 points of fatigue, 10 points for each base runner. So now we're in this column and it could be a grand slam. It goes from a fielder's choice to short to a possible grand slam simply because Bird is fatigued. Now you could get away with it. It could become a flyout. But you might not. It might become a grand slam. All right. So these are the basics that you need to know for season ticket baseball to get you started. With the quick start card and a basic understanding of the game and what the cards look like. All right. Now I haven't gone over everything. And I will come back in a future video and do that. But this is enough to get you started. Now let's talk about ordering information. Okay, last but not least, your ordering information for Season Ticket Baseball. First thing you do is go to Season Ticket Baseball, all one word, no spaces, dot com. Once you're there, you will find that the instructions for Season Ticket Baseball are a free download. The stuff that I've shown you, but a lot more, including details for more advanced play and rear play charts, are all in the instructions, and they are all free for you to download and check out for yourself, along with a couple of free teams, I believe, 86 Mets and Red Sox are free, I think, but I'm not positive on that. I could be wrong. 
If you are interested in purchasing a season with your download, his seasons go from 2021 all the way back to 1950. I believe he is complete through those 71 seasons. The prices for the PDFs range from $16 to $29.97 and you print out what you want. If you don't want to get PDFs, but you want stuff that's printed, you can get teams for $6 each, and there are combinations of World Series and playoff teams available as well for, I believe, $9.95. You can check that out. And if you don't want to print out the instructions yourself, but you want them to be printed for you and mailed to you, $39.95 is your price for that. SeasonTicketBaseball.com. In a couple of weeks, I'll be starting a uh, 1981 project using Season Ticket Baseball, and we'll go into lots more detail at that time. Hope this has been helpful for you. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget tonight at 6 p.m. will be a another game on my channel, 6 p.m. Central. If you've not subscribed, please do so. And if you want to check out channel membership, now is a great time to get involved. The archive for uh, members-only videos, discounts on the secondary store, and free stuff every month as a thank you for being a channel member are all part of what you get. So thanks for considering that as well. Season ticket baseball is the game. I hope you have a great day. So long, everybody.